Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and uh, thank you for hosting us. It's a pleasure to be here at the Regina M. McGinn Educational Center at SIUH. Uh, before we begin, I would like to recognize some of the special guests with us today. My good friend, Senator Andrew Lanza, Assemblymember Mike Cusick, <laughs> Assemblymember Ron Castorina, Dr. Howard Zucker, Commissioner of New York State Department of Health, Basil Sagos, Commissioner of the Department of Environmental Conservation. Of course, Donna Prosky, who is the Executive Director of Staten Island University Hospital. Joe Shulman, the Executive Vice President of Northwell Health. And former Assemblyman, our good friend Lou Tobacco, Associate Executive Director of SIUH. This afternoon, we will first hear from the Health Commissioner, Dr. Zucker, and then we will hear from Governor Cuomo and from uh, Senator Lanza and Assemblyman Cusick. Uh, before that, I just want to share just a couple of quick thoughts with you. Uh, in March of 2014, I was in Florida with my then fiance, now wife Kim, looking for a spot to hold our wedding in that October. And we got a call saying that my father's health condition had suddenly worsened and that it probably was a good idea that I got back to Staten Island. Uh, and I remember asking my brother, am I going to have time to get back there tonight? Is he still going to be with us? And my brother said, I can't tell you that. I raced all over uh, southern Florida, I found a flight, landed in JFK, and raced to this hospital. And I spent some of the last hours I um, had with my dad. His, his body was racked with cancer. And I start with that because the few times I've had the privilege of introducing our governor or his team or being in his presence, I think of my father because I know he would get a kick. The fact that the son of a motorman, the fact that when I was a kid I used to watch television in the news with my dad and watch Mario Cuomo on TV, the fact that I would have, his son would have the chance to introduce not only the governor, but Mario Cuomo's son. And I start with that also because this governor um, gets it. This governor gets uh, that old Matt Carney lyric that we are all one phone call from our knees. And this governor gets that on Staten Island too many families uh, have received uh, that phone call. We have to do a better job in this borough of controlling the things that we control in terms of our health and wellness, how we eat, what we eat, if we exercise. But for a long time, um, a lot of us had these creeping suspicions and fears that there was something else at play, and we want answers. Uh, the governor gets it, and the governor is going to try to get us some of those answers and help us. Um, the governor understands that health and safety are the community's top priorities. They are his top priorities, and he's fought to support our hospitals and ensure that New Yorkers have access to affordable and high-quality care. Governor Cuomo is back on Staten Island. I love saying that. This governor gets it, and he is here with his team uh, yet again stepping up for Staten Island. Uh, so please join me now in welcoming his health commissioner, Commissioner Zucker. Good afternoon. And thank you, Borough President Otto. We are here this afternoon to talk about a scourge in our communities. Cancer remains the number two killer in America and has taken the lives of too many of our friends, our relatives, our neighbors. And for one million New York State residents who are dealing with can a cancer diagnosis, it is a challenging reality that has upended their lives. And that's why in New York, we are taking aggressive action to lead the fight against cancer. Under Governor Cuomo's leadership, we have taken steps to help with prevention and diagnostics while investing $3 billion into research to understand and to treat this disease. And the governor clearly knows, knows the issue of cancer very well. His family has been dealing with this, the issue of breast cancer. And as the governor has told us, many times that when there's a diagnosis of cancer in the family, it's in the forefront of your mind at all times. The Department of Health has achieved historic success, for example, with the Tobacco Control Program, which works to eliminate the number one preventable cause of death and disease in New York. 
Nearly 30% of all cancer mortality and 85% of all lung cancer deaths are tobacco related. Our efforts to help reduce youth smoking, those rates have dropped to 4.3%, the lowest in the entire nation. And the adult smoking rates are at 14.2%, the lowest in New York State history. Under the governor's leadership, we have also significantly expanded access to screening. In 2016, we launched our breast cancer awareness campaign to make sure that every woman in this state who should be screened can get screened. And under the New York State Cancer Services Program, contractors across the state work with healthcare providers to provide screening for people who are uninsured or underinsured. This program has resulted in hundreds of cancer and pre-cancer diagnoses, often at early stages when treatment is most effective and will likely save their lives. Now information is a key weapon in the battle against cancer, and in New York, we track data on cancer in every region of the state. And we've seen some anomalies that show certain regions are being hit harder than others. So this type of information is invaluable to help us, to help us understand the causes of cancer, to identify the ways to prevent and to treat it. And the data does show that Staten Island has higher rates of overall cancer than other boroughs in New York City. But these levels are not a cause for alarm. Instead, they are an indication that there is more research that we can do to understand why we are seeing these numbers and what, if anything, we can do to lower the rates in Staten Island and also all across New York State. This state has a tremendous record of taking action against cancer. And under Governor Cuomo's leadership, we will continue to do everything we can to keep New Yorkers healthy, which is why we are here today. So to tell you more about our next steps, please join me in welcoming the governor of the great state of New York, Governor Andrew Cuomo. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It is my pleasure to be here. Thank you very much for having me. I don't want to keep you too long because you people actually do important work. We could sit around and talk all day. Uh, but it's a pleasure to be back at this hospital, part of the uh, Northwell group now. It used to be North Shore. We went through a big study, came up with Northwell. <laughs> Multiple million dollar study. I can't believe it. Head of Northwell, North Shore, gentleman by the name of Michael Dowling. Do you know Michael Dowling? Heavy Italian accent. <laughs> it's such a heavy Italian accent, he camouflages it with an Irish brogue. <laughs> Just think how heavy that accent has to be to camouflage it with an Irish brogue. I tease him about the North Shore to Northwell six million dollar study to come up with a new name. I don't know if it was six million, but I say that just to annoy him. The uh, first heartfelt, God bless you for what you do. Uh, you are literally in the life-saving business. Uh, I don't know how you do what you do day in and day out uh, and deal with the pain and deal with the humanity and the families and uh, the loss day after day after day. And you do it with a phenomenal ability and professionalism. You do it without the necessary resources. You do it at very tough times. We're looking at all these federal cuts now. If half of these federal health care cuts happen, they're going to devastate the health care system in this state. They're talking about cutting Medicaid by about a third. They're talking about cutting all aid to public hospitals, which are the safety net hospitals uh, in our system. They're talking about ending a program called CHIPS. CHIPS is Child Health Insurance Program. CHIPS was started here in the state of New York. It insures just poor children, not the families, not the parents. Poor children up to 400% of Medicaid. Uh, but just the children. And it was started here in New York, started by a governor named Mario Cuomo. And 
president named Bill Clinton called up Mario Cuomo and he said, I love this CHIPS program. I want to take it nationwide. My father said, fine, just give me credit for it when you do it. <laughs> Clinton said, of course, of course. What do you think I am? <laughs> Clinton never mentioned my father. But <laughs> this is the business we have chosen. <laughs> uh, and it's been in existence ever since. And now they want to end chips. 350,000 children in the state of New York would have no health insurance. So uh, what you do is miraculous uh, under the best of circumstances and dealing with what you're dealing with. Uh, you have nothing but my deepest respect and appreciation for what you do. Uh, to your elected officials, my colleagues, your borough president, uh, your senator, your assemblyman. These are really an extraordinary group of elected officials. I worked in Washington for eight years. I worked with politicians all across the country. I work with elected officials all across the state. Now they're special. I'll tell you where you, you see it. You see the judge of people when times are tough. You know, when things are going well, it's easy. It's easy to be a nice guy and a happy guy, guy being gender neutral. Uh, Hurricane Sandy, we're coming up with the five year, on the five year anniversary. Feels like just yesterday. Hurricane Sandy is when you looked into a person's soul. That's when times were tough. Uh, and that's when you really got to see what people were about. Staten Island was unique. The way people came together, the way people helped one another, all the differences went out the window, all the parochialism went out the window, all the partisanship went out the window, and they just came together and they worked together and did extraordinary work. And leadership showed through. And what your borough president did what Borough President Otto did, what Senator Lanza did, what Assemblyman Michael Cusick did was extraordinary. So let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> to Commissioner Howard Zucker and Commissioner Basil Sagos, who do a great job, the Health Commissioner and the DEC Commissioner, and let's give them a round of applause. Health Commissioner is also here to do an, a surprise inspection on all your systems and... No. Senator Lanza does that. <laughs> uh, the topic we're here to talk about is not a happy topic. It is the C word. Uh, the topic is cancer. Um, something you'd never want to talk about uh, if you didn't have to. But uh, I don't believe in the theory of denial as a life strategy. It is a major problem. It's something we have to address. It's something we're very aggressive about in the state of New York. We're probably the most aggressive state in attacking cancer uh, in the country, and I'm proud of that. 110,000 new diagnoses per year. 35,000 people die per year. Dr. Zucker said a million people live with it, meaning a million people had it or have it. And even that is deceiving. Because as the borough president said, when you, one person has it, it affects the entire family. Uh, and it casts a shadow that is there every day. A uh, person goes for treatment and uh, has an operation and then they come home, but it's never gone. It's in the house all the time. You're watching TV and a cancer commercial comes on TV and it comes right back and you, you feel it go all through your body. Uh, going for constant checkups and tests, and the kids call and they say, what did the doctor say? Did you get the results? No, it's Wednesday, I'll call back Wednesday. And it really takes over your life. 
uh, with, a, with a dread and a foreboding uh, that changes who you are. Just changes who you are, changes how you live your life. I see it even with my kids, changed uh, their perspective. Uh, it, they grew up in a way, it, it gave them a harsh reality uh, at a very young age. So it's very tough to live with. And one of the ways I live with it is knowing that I'm doing everything I can do in the gift that God gave me, which is this office, to make sure no one else has to go through that or feel that pain. And that's why I'm very proud of what we're doing. We've made great progress. There is no reason why in the state of New York, a woman does not go for a breast cancer screening. There is no reason. We went through, we did focus groups. Why don't women go? Too expensive. I don't want to pay the copay. I don't have the time. I have the kids, I have to work, et cetera. We passed a law in the state of New York, only state in the nation, no copay for a breast cancer screening exam or any follow-up testing that comes from that screening. 100% free, not a dollar out of the woman's pocket. Part of the law was we have clinics in every community that now offer breast screening after five o'clock and on weekends. So it's convenient, there's no reason not to do it. We call it the no excuses campaign. We're making great progress on genome therapy and that's exciting. Uh, just starting, expensive, but a lot of promise where when they do that mapping of the genome, they can come up with a treatment that works by the fingerprint of that genome. We have a genome center in Manhattan that's doing it. University of Buffalo is making great progress. So there's a lot of good news on the treatment front. Uh, but the question is always, how do we do more? How do we do more? How do we do more? Now, Dr. Zucker mentioned that we have numbers of where people have cancer in the state of New York. And we have a significant database. This morning we were in Warren County, Glens Falls, just north of Albany at the foot of the Adirondacks. Highest incidence of cancer in the state is Warren County. I said to Dr. Zucker, why? Why? Why is Warren County number one? Why is Erie County, Buffalo, number two? Why are they higher than New York City as a whole? Why? Why is New York City a lower incidence of cancer than upstate New York? Upstate New York, green rolling fields, no pollution, outdoors, why? Why does Staten Island have a higher rate of cancer than the other boroughs? Why Staten Island and not Queens? Not Brooklyn? Not the Bronx? Why? We need to have those questions answered. We're doing great on the treatment side. We want to do as well on the prevention side. My sister is a doctor. It's a sore point in my family. <laughs> you know, the smart one becomes the doctor. That's, the, that's what people really believe. I know people believe that. I've grown up with it. You know the story of the mother who had two sons. One son studied hard, became a doctor. The other son uh, didn't become a doctor, became a politician. And the politician's son always knew that the mother really loved the other son better. She was so proud to say, my son, the doctor. So the politician's son worked very hard to compensate. 
and worked very hard and he became state senator, worked very hard, ran, became a congressperson and would call up his mother and say, you know, I'm a, I'm a congressperson now, mom. She said, that's nice, the Congress, that's nice. <laughs> And he worked very hard. He became a U.S. senator. Called up his mother, Mom, I'm a senator. I'm a senator. Nice. That's nice. A senator's nice. Worked really hard, became president of the United States. Calls up his mother. Says, Mom, I want you to come down for the inauguration. I want you to sit in the front row. I'm going to be inaugurated president of the United States. Mom says, OK, I'll come. Mother comes down, they put her in the front seat. Gentleman sits down next to her. President-elect walks out on the stage. She nudges the person next to her. She says, you see that man? That's my son. He said, wow. You know, his brother's a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> so I have my sister, the doctor. And she wrote a book because she's the smart one, uh, a world without cancer, where my sister's point is we focus a lot on treatment, we have to focus on prevention. And the question, and we are doing well on treatment, by the way. New York, among the other states, we are in the top quarter for number of cases of cancer, okay? Top quarter for the number of cases of cancer bottom quarter for the number of mortalities. So we're doing well on the treatment side, but the question is the prevention side. And we'll know what to prevent once we know what the cause is. And the Department of Health, working with uh, DEC, the Environmental Department, are going to study what health factors, demographic factors, environmental factors, could be at play to suggest a reason for those differences. Why Staten Island versus New York City? Why Warren County? Why Buffalo? Why Nassau? Why Suffolk? A 20% deviation. We're not talking about a small deviation. We're talking about a 20% deviation between the highest incidence and the lowest incidence. So it is significant. So there is something at work. And everybody has a theory, and everybody has a concept. Uh, but we're going to do the first state to do the study within their state on the variance, the deviation, to find out what's causing it. We find out what's causing it, and then we're going to figure out how to prevent it. Uh, and then we will all know, when we put our head on the pillow at night, that uh, God gives us pain, and God takes people when God thinks he should take them, and that is all above our pay grade. But we're doing whatever we can do to prevent this disease and prevent other people from feeling the pain. Uh, I want to thank and applaud the health commissioner and the DEC commissioner. They're going to have the study done in one year, they promised, or they're going to move to the state of New Jersey. <laughs> Uh, and I'm excited to see what it says. Uh, and in the meantime, again, God bless you for what you do and how you do it. And it's an honor to be with you. Thank you for having me today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's now my pleasure to give you my colleague, my friend. We have a lot of fun in Albany together. Not true. Senator Andrew Alonzo. He likes to call me Lanza, even though I prefer Lanza. He does it on purpose. It's all right. A couple of weeks ago, he was calling me Sandra, which was a little weird. <laughs> you remember that? Um, you know, just listening to the governor over the last uh, few moments, I'm sure you can appreciate why I consider myself incredibly fortunate to have him as not only a colleague, but a friend, and more importantly, 
how blessed we are to have him as our governor of the great state of New York. You know, this is the second time I have stood with him on Staten Island in as many weeks. Uh, and believe it or not, as the governor alluded to and Borough President Otto, Otto did, this angers some people. You know, they'd rather have people fighting. Uh, and they especially don't like it when Republicans and Democrats work together. And, um, and that's a shame. Um, there are a lot of people, those twits on Twitter and the buffoons on the blogs, who live off the hate and they live off the fighting. Uh, but this governor, as Jimmy Otto said, really, truly gets it. And if you're mad that we're working together, blame him. <laughs> blame him for, once again, doing the right thing, acting in the best interests of the people, not only here on Staten Island, but of the people across the state. Uh, he really does get it, and he really does care. And believe it or not, it's not easy. This is a real issue. Um, and these are the issues that are the toughest to deal with and address. Um, because the solutions are not so easy to attain. And it takes a lot of work, and it takes intelligence, and it takes commitment and dedication. In fact, it's easier to avoid the real issues uh, and just peddle in the other nonsense. Well, that's not this governor's way. And I thank him for once again taking the path less traveled. Uh, and I know why, especially with this issue. It's not just because he really is a man of integrity and character and he really does believe in the opportunity to serve the people. You've heard him speak for a few moments here about the scourge of cancer. You've heard perhaps him speak across the state on this issue. Uh, I've had some conversations with him in private and while I make it a point never to really betray private conversations or talk about what is said in private, I'm going to take a liberty here. Uh, there have been many times when the governor and I have talked about issues uh, that we're dealing with in Albany. Uh, and more than a few times, he has brought up the issue of cancer. And I've watched him in these behind closed doors in his office, I've watched him get very passionate and uh, at times very, very emotional. Uh, this is something that he feels very deeply about. This is something that he wants to be part of in terms of a solution. I've heard it from him when the cameras were off. I've watched him talk about it when there was no one else really there to report it. Uh, he wants to make a difference. And I'm proud, once again, to stand with him, with my colleagues, the borough president, Dr. Zucker, Assemblyman Cusick, and everyone here. And by the way, uh, thank you all for hosting this here at Staten Island University Hospital. This is an incredible place because it is filled with remarkable people like you. And we uh, really, the people of Staten Island, are very blessed to have you working every day on behalf of, the, of our health care system. So, let me say this. This work that the governor is leading the state on, I truly believe will make, make a difference. Uh, he described what we all feel and we all know um, about this issue of cancer. Um, we know that if, health, if uh, heart disease doesn't get you, cancer is going to. Um, and we know here on Staten Island that we have a particular issue in this high, this elevated rate of cancer. And we don't know what that's all about and where it's coming from. We do have our, our theories. And we've been asking for many years for a look at this. And um, not to be flippant, but you know, the answer we've received in the past from the New York City Health Department was, well, there are a lot of Italians out there in Staten Island who eat too much fried food. And um, it's a bit insulting because we know that eating habits these days, there are less differences uh, from region to region. You know, fast food has become the norm throughout the country. Um, and we've suspected that there's something environmental. Tr to be certain, nutrition, personal health habits, that's the front line in terms of cancer prevention, no doubt about it. Um, but I think it was the Staten Island Advance who coined the phrase years ago that there is a cancer alley here on Staten Island. 
and in particular, due east of New Jersey smokestacks and those uh, environmental abominations, the Staten Island landfill and Brookfield landfill. And so we've always had this feeling here on Staten Island that perhaps those environmental factors have contributed to this rate. Um, but we don't know, and it's important to know the facts, and that's what the governor is doing here. He is embarking upon a process that will del deliver facts so that we can see whether or not there is uh, governmental policy or practices which can then uh, ensure in the future that we, uh, we have less incidents and we can deliver information to you, the health community that really is out there uh, with, that pr with that information, with your expertise and with the technology to actually save lives. So uh, once again, I just want to say, Governor Cuomo, thank you for always having the best interests of the people of the state in mind. You're doing a great job. Again, it's a privilege to stand with you and my colleagues. Thank you. Um, it's my privilege to introduce uh, another great leader, a good friend, and a person that works tirelessly on behalf of the people of this state. That's Assemblyman Mike Cusick. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Lanza. Uh, thank you, Governor. Doctor, thank you. Commissioner, thank you for being here on Staten Island. First, I'd like to start by, by thanking the healthcare professionals that are here today uh, for the work that you do here on Staten Island. Uh, the governor knows that this is a tight-knit community here on Staten Island, and whenever there is an issue or something that we have to band together, our community comes together. And this is one of those areas that the healthcare community has led the charge for Staten Islanders. And uh, on behalf of <clears throat> the folks I represent and my family, I want to thank all of the professionals that are here today for the work that you do on behalf of the people of Staten Island. Thank you so much. It was said before by Senator Lanza that uh, this is not the first time in the last two weeks that Governor Cuomo has been here on Staten Island. And this is uh, not a mistake in scheduling or anything like that. It is proof that this governor gets Staten Island. He understands this borough. He understands our needs. He understands what the issues are here on Staten Island. A couple of weeks ago, he was here to announce that we're attacking on a criminal level legislation to attack the, scare, the scourge of opioid addiction here on Staten Island. Today, he's here to help us in our fight against cancer. The governor had mentioned before about Sandy. He was here leading us, elected officials, helping people, going door to door, making sure that people were taken care of. You know, I've been in office, some will say too long, but I've been in office long enough to understand, and I've gone through four governors. Uh, and I understand what a governor is supposed to do, what a governor can do, and what a governor really does do. And this governor goes beyond the call of what the description, if there is a description out there of what a governor is supposed to do, he goes beyond that. And to be selfish, thank God he does it for the people of Staten Island. Because particularly in this fight, this cancer fight, we leave it up to the experts here. We'll leave it up to the doctors. Dr. Zucker and his team will analyze, come up with research, give you the opportunity, give you what's needed to pinpoint what's causing this on Staten Island. We will get out of the way as government, but government is needed in this to start this process moving forward. And Governor Cuomo saw this head on. It was reported shortly ago that Staten Island had the highest in some cases of cancer here in New York City. Where is he today? announcing that we are going to, all hands on deck, we are going to look at this, we are going to analyze it, we are going to find out how we can find answers. He's here on Staten Island. He's working with my colleagues, with Senator Lanza, with the borough president, with my good friend, Ron Castorina in the assembly, and all our colleagues in the state legislature. This is what's needed when there is 
a danger where there is something that we have to address as a community. And no one does it better than Staten Island. Ladies and gentlemen, every one of us has been touched by cancer. I mentioned to, to my good friend Andy Lanza, sitting there listening to Borough President Otto, just the three of us alone, Lanza, Otto, and Cusick, all lost a parent to cancer. The odds are staggering. In this room, I'm sure we would have that same if we went row by row. I don't know about you, but I'm sick of it. And I know all of you are. And that's why, as government officials, we're going to do our best to give you the resources to figure this out here on Staten Island. And that's what we can do and work with you. You know, again, I want to thank the governor. I also want to say that many of us have been touched, like I said, by this cancer scourge. And, uh, you know, I wouldn't, I'd be remiss if I didn't say, you know, be just a month ago, this is where it hits. Just a month ago, the governor and I lost a good friend in the legislature who was battling cancer for, for years, and he died suddenly. My good friend, Assemblyman Mike Samanowitz, and the governor's good friend. Just like that someone who is close to you is gone. If it's not our job, not our responsibility, to find out how to fix this, then I don't know what is. So that's why I know, because the governor is leading this charge, we will, we will get answers for you doctors, for the professionals, to get this under control here on Staten Island. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, I am the cleanup hitter today, so I want to thank you for, for being here today. On behalf of my colleagues, on behalf of the governor, on behalf of both commissioners, and thank you, SIUH. Thank you, Donna. Thank you, everybody, for hosting us today. And thank you, and we look forward to working with you on this most important issue. Thank you for coming.